Hey everybody. Okay, so for tonight's homework, actually this is the first time I tried it, so I'm kind of glad it's working here. All right, I'm going to look at this first question. You only had eight questions. This first one reads, Cindy has a game box shaped like a rectangular prism. Now she used the equation below to find the volume of the game box in cubic inches. If the width is four inches, what are all the possible lengths and the height? Um, that the height and the length could be. So what is the volume of the game box? So if the width is four inches, what are all the possible lengths that the height and the length could be? So let's look at this question number one. So for number one, we use this formula, V equals 24 times four. All right, so this is what I'm gonna find for the volume. So I'm gonna multiply 24 times four, four times four equals that's right, 16, regroup my one, four times two is eight plus one is nine. So this is going to be volume equals 96, and it asked me to measure it in inches. So I'm gonna have cubic inches. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and build a box, a three-dimensional box, set a re rectangular prism. Okay, and it says that if the width is four inches, so this is how wide the box is, my four inches. What are all the possibilities for the length and the height? Well, I'm looking over here for my length and my height, that was 24, because I have to get to nine, 96 cubic inches, right? That's my volume. So what are all my possibilities? So what times what, length is what, width is what. So what times what is going to equal to 24 because I know that I'm gonna multiply 24 times four to get to 96. Okay, so we did this one, um, two times 12 equals 24. Three times, very good, eight equals 24. There's a four, four times six equals 24. Is there a five times anything, six times anything? No, nope, we've already done that one. Seven, nope, eight, we did eight times three, three times eight, nine times, nope, 10, nope, 11, nope, 12, 12 times two or two times 12. And that's as far as we can get. So we're looking at that the height can be two inches, the length can be 12, or it could be three inches and the length could be eight, or it could be four inches and the length could be six. So any of these combinations, can work. So these are my combinations. It's can, the length can be, so I'm gonna actually, it can, this is gonna be my length times my width. So I, it could be a two and a 12, it could be the three and the eight, or four and a six. Those are the different combinations. Let's look at number two. Number two reads that Carmen is making punch using liquids below. So she has a 12 fluent, uh, fluid ounce orange juice, 38 fluid ounce pineapple juice, one and three fourths cups of lemon juice, and one gallon of water. So what is the total amount of liquids in fluid ounces is what I need to find first. Okay, so I'm gonna write down what I have. So this is what's given. I have 12 fluid ounces. I'm gonna put OJ, I'm gonna just abbreviate. I have 38 fluid ounces for pineapple juice, PJ. One, and I'm gonna change that three fourths. I know that it's, I'm changing it to a decimal. Thinking of it as I had 
quarters, four quarters. So if I have three out of four quarters, it's 75. So it's going to be one in 75 hundredths fluid ounces. And LJ for lemon juice. And then it's one gallon of water. And I'm just going to write H2O because my hand is hurting. All right, so now we have to find fluid ounces. So we're gonna change to fluid ounces. Well, do I have to do anything to this one? Nope, I can keep my 12 here. Do I need to change anything here? Nope, I'm gonna keep the 38 there. But here I'm gonna to need to make some changes, right? And then the gallons. Well, we already know, if you remember back in your notes, we've already figured out the gallon, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and then just draw it out the picture because this is what you should already have in your journal. This was the one gallon. And our one gallon, we made four quarts. And our four quarts, we know that for each quart are two pints. It makes a quart, and we know that for every pint, it's two cups. So we figured out that was going to be 16 cups equals one gallon, and we know that for every cup, it's eight ounces. And remember, we're looking at this one right here. For every one cup, it's eight ounces. So we had my 16 times eight, and that makes it 128 ounces. So that one you should know right off the top of your head because we did that all last week and this week to finish up. Here I'm looking at one and 75 hundredths fluid ounces. Um, if we put this down in our chart, because this is another thing that you can do, cups to ounces. I know that for every one cup is equal to eight ounces. So my rule is going to be multiplying that by eight. I have one and 75 hundredths times eight. So I'm going to multiply that out times eight. Remember, I'm going to move my decimal out two times. Make sure that I move it back in and my product. Eight times five equals 40. 8 times 7 equals 56, plus 4 more is 60. 8 times 1 plus 6 equals 14. I'm going to move my decimal over twice, put it back in, and it equals to 14 ounces. And there you go. Now I'm going to add these up. And I don't like to have the larger number, so I'm going to move this around because I don't ever feel comfortable with myself adding the larger number at the bottom. I like to have that on the top and then kind of keep my two digits and three digits together or separated. Um, so I have 12, 38, and 14. So this 8 plus 2 is 10. And then um, 10 plus 8 equals 18. 19, 20, 21, 22. Regroup my two. Two, four, five. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus one equals nine. And bring down my one. So this is going to equal to 192. I'm going to put how many ounces? It's going to be 192 ounces. Next thing it's asking me is how many um, cups. So how many cups are we going to have? All right. I'm going to flip this over so that I have more room, but I'm not going to write on the back because it's not going to look good. Oops. Let me switch this to the back of here and that will be my, my cushioned. So now it's how many cups? All right. I've already figured out how many ounces, right? So I have my ounces, 
my rule, and my cup. I know, looking at my star reference sheet, there's eight fluid ounces to one cup. How did I get there? I had to divide it by itself. And so how many ounces did I end up having? Very good, I had 192 ounces. Divide that by eight. And how many cups did I get? So eight goes into 192. Eight goes into 19 two times. That's 16. That makes it three, bring down my two. Eight goes into 32, how many times? Very good, four. Eight times four equals 32. Subtract that out and it's zero. So 192 ounces is equal to 24 cups. There you go. All right, next it was asking me how many quarts. So now I needed to find out how many quarts. All right, well now I need to go to my sheet and it's like, all right, well, I can't just cut through the lanes to get to cups to quarts. So I have to go cups to pints and then pints to quarts. So I need to go cups to pints. Then I can go pints to quarts. It's like a road map. Can't cut through the medians on the street. You have to turn, go straight, and then turn and go straight again. So cups. Roll pints. I know that for every two cups, it's one pint. And it was right over here. So for every two cups, it's one pint. I know that I, in order to get from that two to one, I had to divide it by itself. So it's two divided by two. I ended up having 24 cups divided by two equals. 12 pints. Now I'm going to go from pints, put my rule to quarts. Looking over here, because I need to establish my rule, I know that there's two pints for one quart. And we did this in class last week. Two pints equals one quart. Two divided by two equals one. If that's the case. I have 12 pints. Divided by two equals six quarts. So how many quarts? I have six quarts. All right, excellent, moving right along. Uh, okay, so I had already done the work ahead of time. Okay. Now let's go to question number three. Number three reads that Mr. Castro, I'm gonna bring this over here. Mr. Castro painted the top of a rectangular table. The perimeter of the table is 32 inches. The area of the table is 48 square inches. What could be the length and the width of Mr. Castro's tabletop? All right, so I'm not going to draw out the table. I'm a terrible driver, draw, driver, drawer. I'm a great driver, but a terrible drawer. So I'm just gonna draw out the top of the table. I know that the area is equal to 48 square inches and that the perimeter is equal to 32 inches. Remember the formula for the area on a rectangular prism? So I'm looking at area for a rectangular is area equals length times width, right? So here I know that area equals length times width. And we're saying that it's gonna be 48. So 48 equals something times something. And our job is to figure out what does this represent and what does this represent? It's giving us the 48. So right away, what could you, what are some combinations for 48? All right, I hear a six times eight, very good. So let's do that, six times eight, that equals to 48. So I'm gonna put my eight here and my six here. Now, look at the perimeter. We know that 
whatever is opposite is equivalent, opposite it's equivalent, to find the perimeter, I'm just, we're adding up all the sides, right? So I have eight plus eight equals 16, six plus six equals 12, that's six, seven, eight, one, two. Uh-oh, this is gonna be the perimeter using these dimensions, is that right? No, that's not going to be right. So that doesn't work. So I'm going to cross this out because that those dimensions won't work. What other numbers can you multiply together to get 48? Okay, so let's try. Um, if I multiply 2 times what? Okay, so let's look at it. 14 times 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Oh, that doesn't work. That's 28. What about, um, what other combinations can we multiply? Twelve times four. Very good. Um, I'm thinking out loud. So I have twelve times four. So I have four times two is eight. Four times one is forty-eight. So this works out. So I'm going to put twelve here, four here. Now remember, whatever is across is equal. So the opposites are equal. Four across, it's equal. So now let's add that up. My twelve, my two L's. So I have twelve twice. That makes it 24. 4 plus 4 is 8. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 2 plus 1 is 3. Ah, look at that. Do I now match this one here? Yep. So the possible dimensions is going to be 12 and 4. Very good. All right, that works out beautifully. Let's go to the next question. Number four, we're halfway done. This one here can be a little tricky, but you are going to see what you can do to add these up. So Mr. Evans is building pyramids out of sugar cubes. Each cube is one cubic centimeter what is the volume in cubic centimeters of his pyramid? Okay, so you're supposed to be able to see that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So if it was six across, it looks like these are, look at this, see this word cube? What do we know? If each cube is one cubic centimeter, and what is the volume of the cubic? So these are going to be cubes. And so they are making, what do we know about a cube? Is what I am safely assuming. Very good. That if you know one side, you'll know the other. So here, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this first one is going to be a six. The base is a six by six, and it's by one. So that equals 36. Oops, so sorry about that. Let's look at the next one. I have one, two, three, four, five. So if this is five, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So this is five times five times one equals 25. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops. And then this is a 4. So I have a 4 times 4 times 1. That equals to 16. And the next one is a 3. So I have a 3 by 3. So it's 3 times 3 times 1 equals 9. Then I have a 2 by 2 by 1 equals 4. 
and then at one by one by one equals one. And now I'm gonna add them all up. Nine, 10, 14, plus six equals 20, 25, 31. Is that right? So I have 10, 14, 14 plus six is 20. 20 plus five equals 25, 25 plus six equals 31. That's not what I got on the last one. Nine, 14. 14 plus six equals 20. And this is 11. So it is equal to 31. So I have three, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is going to be 91 cubic centimeters. So it took 91 of them um, to make that. Okay. I'm trying to see what I did wrong on the other one. 36, 25. Oh, I missed one. Okay, so when I did the practice one, I missed one of the um, pyramids. So it's six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now it makes sense. I got stuck because I, I did it and I missed, I did not count this one. And so that's why it threw me off. Okay, so now let's look at number five. Here it has Mr. Castro painted. I'm gonna show you the problem. Here we go. There are two rectangular windows in Mrs. Martin's living room. One window is 26 inches wide and 32 inches tall. The other window is 33 inches wide and 27 inches tall. So what is the difference in the areas of the windows and what is the difference in the perimeters of the windows? So I need to draw out two windows because it told me that there was gonna be two. And I know that there are going to be, um, that they're rectangular windows. So here's one. And here's the other. The first window, it's 26 inches wide. I'm gonna put my little quotations for the inches. And it's 32 inches tall. The second window is 27 inches wide and 33 inches tall. This is what is the difference in area? So I need to find the area equals length times width. Area equals length times width. This is going to be 26 times 32. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out starting at um, standard algorithm. So I will put this up here. 26 times 32. Six, 2 times 6 equals 12. Regroup my 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. I'm done with my ones. I put a zero, move over into my tens. Then I have three times six equals 18. Regroup my one. Three times two is six plus one is seven. Add this up. I have two. This is um, 13. And I have 832. So the area is equal to 832 square inches. Going to multiply this out here so the area is equal to 27 times 33. So I have 27 times 33. 3 times 7 equals 21. Regroup. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8. Cross out my 3, bring down my 0, and I'm moving over to my 10s. 3 times 7 equals 21. Regroup my 2. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8. Add these up, so I have one, nine, 891. So the area equals 891 square inches. Ask me to find out what the difference is. So I'm gonna subtract this out, 891 minus 832. This makes it nine. So the difference is 59 square inches. So this is the larger window. 
right? 59 square inches. Then it talks about the perimeter. Okay, so I know that the opposite side is equivalent. Opposite side is equivalent. 26 plus 26. It's 52, but I want to go ahead and show you. 6 plus 6 is 12. Um, 2, 4, 5, that's 52. Then I have 32 plus 32, or times 2, is 64. Then I'm going to add these up. 64 plus 52, that's 6, 11. So this is going to be 11 inches. Let's look at this next one. I have 27. Remember, the opposite sides are congruent. 27 plus 27 is 14. 54, 33 plus 33 equals 66. So I'm going to add these up, 66 plus 54. 6 plus 4 is 10. Regroup, that's 11 and 12. All right, so this is going to be 120 inches. This is the perimeter. It asked me to find the difference. So 120 minus 116 equals, and it's going to be 4 inches in difference. in the perimeter. Okay, there you go. All right, let's look at number six. We needed to convert that one. And on number six, it reads that Michelle can run 7,000 She can run 7,067 yards without stopping. Well, last year, she ran four miles without stopping. When the question is, is how many more feet? Can Michelle run than last year? Okay, and so this is the one that we're working on right here. How many more feet can Michelle run now than she could run last year? All right, so now I need to convert these miles into yards. So I have to, for every one mile, and this is going to be my rule. Looking at my star data sheet, which is in your Google Classroom as well. For every one mile, it's 1,760 yards. So I'm going to multiply that by 1,760. She ran four miles, so four times, very good, 1,760. So 1,760 times four. It's four times zero is zero. Four times six equals 24. Regroup my two. Four times seven is 28 plus two is 30. Regroup my three. Four times one is four plus three is seven. So it's 7,040. Now it's asking me, what is the difference? Well, um, in feet. So now I have to take my 7,000, so I have to take my difference in yards first. So I have 7,067 minus 7,040. That's seven, so it's 27 yards. Now I need to convert the 27 yards into feet. So I'm going to yard rule to feet. I know that for every one yard, it's how many feet? Very good, it's three feet right here. For every one yard equals three feet. How did I get from one to three? My rule is going to be multiplied by three. 
And I have 27 yards times three. So 27 times three. Three times seven equals 21. Regroup my two. Three times two is six plus two is eight. 81 feet is her difference. So she ran 81 feet more this year than last year. Way to go, Michelle. Good job. All right, we have two more problems left. So problem number seven. Jake makes one inch ice cubes in the seven rectangular trays. So he has seven ice trays. So think of the layers. What's the height of it? How many layers do you have? So I'm going to be number seven. Volume equals length times width times height. So I have my height's going to be seven layers of ice trays. He stacks the trays in the freezer to form a rectangular prism. Okay, so each tray holds six rows. So this is one, two, three, four, five, excuse me, six rows. So this is going to be six for the width and 15 um, with 15 cubes per row. So that'll be the length. So we have the width is 15. What's the total volume? So now I'm coming over here. I have the width is equal to 6 and the length is equal to 15. So now I'm going to put this together. Volume equals 15 times 6 times 7. So 15 times 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Regroup. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3 is 90. So this is going to be 90 times 7. 9 times 7 equals 63, and I only have one zero to put in the back, so it's 630 cubic, and then the unit of measure is going to be inches. So it's 630 cubic inches. Let's look at number 8. Brooke has a dog walking business. Okay, He takes his dog walking on a path that is 2 kilometers long. Now, Brooke used this table to record the number of laps he walked the dog each day. So for the collie, he did three laps. Now, remember that each lap is at two kilometers. The Boston Terrier was two laps at two kilometers per lap. The Doberman was four laps at two kilometers per lap. The Poodle was three laps at two kilometers km km per lap. So how many total meters did Brooke walk with his dogs in one day? All right, so now look at this one. Three times two equals six. Two times two equals four. Four times two equals eight. Three times two equals six. We're going to add that up. 10 plus 14 equals 24. So this is going to be I'm going to bring this over to this next one. Some are saying, hold on. You can pause me anytime you need to, okay, so that you can write down your notes. So I'm going to transfer this information over here. This was going to be the collie. Three times two kilometers equals six. This is the, I'm going to put BT for Boston Terrier. Two laps at two kilometers per lap equals four kilometers, uh, six kilometers, four kilometers there. The Doberman, I'm going to put Dober, was four laps at two kilometers per lap and made it eight kilometers total. The Little Poodle, well, they didn't do too bad at three times two kilometers. So that made it a total of six kilometers. Then I'm going to add that part up. And again, six plus four equals 10. 
8 plus 6 equals 14. I add those up and it gives me the 24. Now I'm going from kilometers to meters. Now looking over at my paper, some of you already now remember, for every one kilometer it equals to a thousand meters. For every one kilometer it's 1,000 meters. And what is my rule? Very good, to multiply it by 1,000. So I had 24 kilometers times 1,000. I'm gonna put my zeros to the side. 24 times one equals 24. And then I'm gonna add in my three zeros again, took them out, bring them back in. So you walk 24,000 meters with those monkeys. Okay, so how many total meters? It was a total of 24,000 meters. Good job. Way to go, Brooks. All right, that was it for your tonight's homework. I'm going to be posting a study guide for tomorrow's unit assessment so that you can go back and look at your notes. You guys have a great evening, and thanks for letting me teach you.